Alright, what's up guys? Welcome back to another life drawing video. Today we're going to be drawing the hand, and the hand is honestly probably one of the most difficult things to draw, one of the most expressive things that we have, but it's also one of the best things to draw because you have that reference right in front of you on two sides, right? So you can always look at your hand for reference during this picture. I'm going to be of course talking about the proportions and general things we look for, but again, just like everything, like facial features and body types, um, everyone's hands look different too. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the groundwork here, right? I always like to talk about the structure. So underneath your hand, you have um, this pretty complicated bone structure, right? We have our thumb right here. These are all of our fingers. And what we're looking at when we look at our, um, our hand too, the actual palm part of our hand is gonna start somewhere around here. Okay, the fleshy part before we actually see our fingers um, come up from there, right? So you actually have all this stuff in here hidden underneath that big fleshy kind of square shape of your palm, which is a way that we do kind of want to think about that section when we're drawing. We do want to think of it as um, maybe like a cube you can think or a square or even a wedge shape. I like to give a little bit of roundness to it because again, it's an organic shape that has muscle structures and everything underneath it. <clears throat> so if you go too square and rigid, it just kind of seems more like a building or something that um, isn't organic and natural, right? So um, looking beyond this though, there is a lot of complicated forms below our fingers, which is what gives our fingers all that range of mobility, right? And we do want to think about things like our knuckles because they do protrude from our skin and we can see them. And then also where each one of our joints are, which gives our fingers all that mobility and lets us wrap our fingers around or create a fist or whatever it is. Um, and then also our thumb, which is connected on another joint that kind of gives it that, that mobility to be able to rotate in as well as bend at the finger, right? So let's go ahead and look at this. Let's, um, what would it look like if we were to just wrap on top our skin? So let me get rid of all my little scribbles here. And put this on top. So this is just a light drawing that I sketched over um, the skeleton structure. And this is what we're gonna be drawing today too, but don't worry about drawing this yet. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm just talking it out. We're just trying to figure out what we're about to draw and the, the underlying structure of it. So we have, you can see that the skin doesn't actually touch the bone shape, right? It kind of, it kind of has space and a gap in between it. And that's because there's a lot of muscle structure going on underneath muscles and tendons and all those things that actually help us to move our fingers and our, our hand and our wrists around. Um, there's a lot of um, flesh between, even though these, these muscles go, or not, sorry, these muscles, these uh, skeleton structure goes all the way down that's covered by that skin, right? That flesh again. So we're not seeing that, but the the uh, the bone the bones there are going all the way down into this big jumble of bones right here. This like tetra section, right? So we do want to we just want to be thinking about that. What kind of bone structures do we see? Um, you know where the where the joints connect. We do usually see a bump, right? Um, or even if you turn your hand around, you can see like a line, right? Because that's where your hand, or that's where your finger bends. And so over time, it's created that crease, right? a little bit of a wrinkle. Um, and then sometimes on the other side too, you know, we'll see the shape of that knuckle joint in there, right? Um, depending who we're looking at, especially if you're looking at someone who's older, you can really see those joints um, more clearly than someone who's younger and like their skin is not so... Uh, thin. So, how do we draw this though, right? There are proportions, just like when we're drawing the head and we're drawing the full body and all those things. So, what we're going to be doing, and I just, I'm going to draw this out with you guys too, is but we're going to be drawing a grid structure, something like this. Um, if you guys remember um, drawing the head, we split it in half, and then we had all these other halfway points where it told us like where the mouth was, where the nose was, etc. Similar in this picture, we're using this this grid and we're going to cut it in half like this because this is going to let us know where that 
the boxy part of our hand is, and this center line is letting us know where our middle finger is, so then we can find our other fingers in, um, in that case, right? So what I'm gonna do, and I went ahead and drew um, over this structure too. I'm gonna grab this, so we're gonna start with our left hand from the back side. And today we're just going to do back in front of the hand. If we want to go more into hand things, like maybe we can look specifically at fingers or look at hands in more dynamic shapes, we can do that another day. Um, if we did that all in one video, this video would go on forever. So we're not trying to do that. But let me go ahead and grab this guy. And I'm going to move it off to the side. Oops. So we'll shrink that down. Move it off to the side there as a reference and I'm gonna get rid of oh, I guess we're done I'm gonna get rid of this grid so I can draw it with you guys um, first thing we're gonna draw of this grid is we're gonna draw that line down the center okay so try to get a straight line um, doesn't have to be perfect again you know I talked about organic shapes so this is fine All right and then now what we're gonna do is before we draw those other two lines that you made, you saw in the other one, so if I bring it back, there's two more green lines to the left and to the right. We're gonna actually cut this in half and kind of make a few decisions right now. So like, this is gonna be our middle finger right here. There we go. This is our middle finger right here. And so we're gonna decide how long do we want our middle finger to be. Because um, this is gonna be our longest finger and the top longest part of our hand from both views when we do front and back. So let's say I want, I'm deciding that I want my middle finger from this back view to be that long. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this distance right here and I'm going to try to um, create that right here. So we're going to create like a halfway point. So just using my fingers over my screen and Looks like actually right there would be about good. So maybe give it, I'm gonna give it a little bit longer down there. Um, generally speaking, like these proportions are to help you kind of get a groundwork of the hand, but generally speaking, the box of your hand is actually a little bit bigger than your fingers tend to be. But we can, um, for sake of making it simple, we're gonna think of it as two equal parts, um, being one and two. All right, and then of course we can always go in there and modify that later. So let's get rid of that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in with my ruler, or you guys can just freehand this, but I always get really wiggly lines when I do freehand on um, digital stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and make a line that goes all the way across um, there, come down line it up with this one. And so essentially I'm creating that grid that I showed you guys in the beginning, right? And boom. So now we have this Christmas themed grid because we're using green and red. Let me grab my green again. Boom. Okay. So now we got to create those two other green lines. Um, these other green lines are going to let me know not where the middle, but where the edge of my ring finger is and where the edge of my pointer finger is. So what you're trying to think about as you do this is that you got to think about the thickness of your middle finger and then the fact that the other fingers are going to be here and here. Oh, way too big there. And then that's where that line is going to come down from. Okay. So let me erase that because I don't want my drawing to actually be that scratchy. Oops, there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in and I think around here looks good. I'm gonna just try to make that straight line down to the bottom. And then I'm gonna try to copy this distance and place it over here best I can. Doesn't have to be exact, but you know, just try to give it a good eye. All right, let me erase some of that because I got really messy. Okay, doesn't matter too much. This is my groundwork that I'm gonna erase or hide this layer at when my 
hand is finished anyways. Cool. So this is all we need to start off right now. Uh, we have three lines going vertical up and down, and we have three lines going left to right. And this is just letting me know that this is going to be the length of my hand, and this is the halfway point, right? Um, and then here, let me erase a little bit of this so I can write down here. We have the middle um, finger right here. Not always the best finger, but in this case, it's going to help us draw the hand. So it's a pretty nice finger today. Um, all right, so we're trying to copy this image over here in the left corner. Uh, I put that there in the left corner, too, because trust me, guys, I am also using reference. Hands are difficult, and I'm not trying to say that I can just draw these things out of my head. But knowing these proportions um, sometimes does help me when I am trying to create like a sketch or something, and then I can always go search for a reference later if I decided that the hand is not the way I like. But let's go ahead and create this. We're doing the back side of the hand first. So I'm going to go back and find that blue color of mine, because I really like the way that blue looked on this brown background I chose. Right? And I encourage you guys to find some fun colors too. And we're going to create that middle finger. So what I like to do when I'm drawing fingers um, is try to ignore the fact that they get bumpy as they go down and they go over the bones like we talked. Uh, we can always come back and add those details, right? That's why we draw light at first. But I'm going to draw it as like a tapering, a tapering shape. So maybe not as extreme as this, but it's thinner at the top, and then it gets gradually wider at the bottom, okay? So my finger's not all the way over there. It's just showing you guys. I'm going to start it right here, okay? And then I'm just going to go ahead and draw that down. And this gives me a chance to, before I draw in all those details and stuff, that I can decide maybe I want it wider, maybe I want it thinner. And that way I didn't just commit to all this detail and then have to erase all that and try to make it um, all detailed again, right? You don't want to get yourself frustrated like that because then we're going to not want to draw these things and they're already frustrating enough. So we have our middle finger in there. And you guys can see I drew this little tapering line down here. Um, that goes below the halfway point, okay? That's where the skin is kind of folding and meeting the, um, the square part of our palm, okay? So now we're gonna draw in the ring finger. Um, one way that we can do this to get like, if you guys want like kind of an accurate measurement of where about to place it, is if we take this shape, okay? Actually on the halfway there, and the halfway there, and we cut that in half. Okay, so maybe somewhere around here. So this and this should be about the same size. And then we cut that in half. Okay. A lot of cutting things in half today, like we're magicians. And so now you actually have the division of your fingers here, right? Because if you remember the skeleton I showed you, um, the bones were longer and then they got shorter and shorter and shorter as they gradually went up. What we're going to do now is one more time. Stick with me, we're going to cut this in half. And this is going to let me know where the tip of my ring finger is and where the tip of my pointer finger are. Now, again, these are just general proportions, remember? So if I actually look at my own hand, right? Um, to me, on my hand, my ring finger is actually longer than my pointer finger, just a tiny, tiny bit. Um, I can add that into the picture just by knowing and just kind of like maybe giving myself a little bit of a lower line there. Or if you just want to go ahead and do for the sake of the drawing the proportions, that's fine too. But I, what I'm trying to say is like you don't have to follow these guidelines just w um, super specifically. You know, they're there for you to kind of get the shape down and then make your own path, okay? So ring finger to the left, I'm drawing in the index finger here, to the right, I'm going to have it poke out of that, be a little rebel, it's going to poke out of the guide there, okay, because I know on this edge, the thumb is going to start poking out, right, and that the skin of the thumb sticks out a little further, so I'm kind of preparing myself for that, okay, um, on this side, on the left side, <coughs> we still have our pinky finger. So now how do we find our pinky finger? Pretty much very similar to how we found 
our um, ring finger and index finger. I'm going to take the ring finger here. I'm going to cut that shape in half, right? About, oh, that's a little too high, maybe a little lower. Okay, I'm going to cut that in half. And instead of cutting in half one more time, this is actually going to be where our pinky finger um, about starts, right? And again, this is going to be your smallest finger. So if this looks too high for you, you can make it lower. If it looks too low for you, you can make it a little bit higher. Um, but this one is going to go down a little bit further. One trick I like to do at the bottom of the middle finger when you have this line, it kind of, if you just kind of continue that slope, it'll let you know about how long these fingers go. And this is where the pinky finger is going to connect to the box of the hand. Um, all right, from here, what I like to do before we get into the thumb, okay, because remember the thumb is on that swivel joint and it can get complicated. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw in a box. Okay. Or not a box, a square. Cool. Now it looks like a really weird square with maybe some coral or something on top. But we're going to come back in and round this out later. So again, if you're drawing this, make sure you're drawing this nice and light. And what we're going to do here is off the edge of my um, index finger here, I'm going to go ahead and draw a wedge shape on there. So it's going to come out and out. And you can have those guys meet right there, maybe about at the halfway point of this, but nothing specific. And then this is going to continue off a little bit like this. Okay. So you're kind of creating this triangle shape here, and then it, that line is continuing off this way. Now, we're going to have a joint of our thumb here. So it's going to end up wrapping around there. It's going to come um, up. You know, actually, I think I made that a little too long, so I'm going to just go a little lower on that. I want the joint of my thumb to be here. I don't want to have such a crazy long thumb. Um, and then it's going to come up. The other joint's going to be right around here, almost where that line meets. And then you're going to create another bump. Okay. And then from here, the thumb always looks good if you just kind of create like a wedge shape. Whenever you're seeing the thumb more from like a side view, you get this really nice wedge shape. And it always kind of, for me, makes adds that realism to the hand that I'm trying to draw. <clears throat> Instead of drawing it as like a round, perfect shape. Um, the thumb kind of has like a nice one side rounded, one side straight. All right, and then now we just kind of connect this down to the wedge that we created or that triangle we created earlier. Okay, <clears throat> and then you can go ahead and erase anything you don't want in there. Maybe kind of decide um, how you want this to look. So I can come in and erase this beginning part of my square. And I can say, well, I want this to look a little more fleshy, so let's go ahead and round that out a little bit. Okay. Now, we got the other side to tackle, right? Um, so here, what we're looking at is basically, I'm just going to erase this, but remember where it was. If you guys drew lightly, just draw over it. Um, you're just going to have kind of like a curve that comes in here. It's going to tuck in a little bit underneath the, the pinky, but not so much. The actual wrist is going to come down um, to the left side of this grid that we made. So you see the line would continue down here, and you'd actually have a little more space. So the wrist on this side is coming out a little more. The wrist on this side follows that green line. Okay, Pretty simple right there. And then from there, we have our hand. Right. Um, you can look at this. For me, it looks like my my thumb, and this usually happens to me, got a little long. So we can always go in and correct that. Um, for me, like if you want to erase or whatever, for me it's nice and easy. On here, I can just boop, maybe bring that in a little bit. And fix that as we go. There we go. That looks a little more proportional, right? There it is. Um, last things we can add to this, which I didn't add to the example necessarily, is we can add the knuckles. Um, the knuckles are actually going to start below 
that um, halfway mark. Because remember, our um, we have a lot of our, our bones of our fingers going down to the bottom of our hands, right? So the middle finger one is going to be right here. Okay, and then they're just going to scale down as they go. Okay, don't draw them too low, right? But like, and obviously this isn't what they would look like on the skin, but if we're just trying to figure out where these landmarks might be, the the knuckle of the, the uh, pointer finger is actually going to be almost at the same height with the middle finger. Maybe a little lower or maybe a little smaller. But generally, you'll see a lot of artists actually emphasizing that knuckle over the other ones just because it gives a little more interest to the picture. Um, what we can also draw here, because this is the back side, is we can give this hand some nails. Okay. And nails are going to just kind of be. <coughs> They're going to float to the surface of the finger you created and then <clears throat> just kind of hang out there like that. They taper in, okay, so I'm like that, round it at the bottom, and then round it at the top, okay? And again, we have different, some people have longer nails, shorter nails. Um, it all depends on who we're drawing, so always always be looking for your reference. What are you trying to tell with your character? Do you want your character to have longer nails um, that you can like maybe add some color to? Or maybe trying to show that your character plays guitar or something so they have longer longer nails so they can do guitar picking. Um, whatever the story is, right? You gotta think about who your character is and these are all elements that add to it, which is why hands are one of those really expressive things. Okay, so there is our back side of the hand. If you guys need a little extra time on this, just go ahead and pause the screen now. I'm going to continue on to the front. Um, so we're just going to hide that. And I can also hide... Oh, I might have drew on that layer. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and look at our front of our hand, right? So this is the same hand flipped over. So if you want to go ahead and look at your left hand from the back, roll it over. We're drawing that now. Okay. So there's a little more going on here. Go ahead and look at your hand. You see there's lines running through because this is the part, this is your front side of your hand. So this is where your hand collapses. It grabs things. It wraps around. So it has wrinkles because it's moving and it's, it's folding all the time. Um, there's also some fleshy uh, muscular mounds in here so you can kind of push into those and feel because um, there's not much um, blocking you from feeling your muscle structure in your hand right your hand is usually a pretty lean part of your body um, so we're going to go ahead and draw this in and we're going to use the same grid so we don't have to redraw the grid or if you did draw the grid and now you're going to draw this on another piece of paper maybe just put the paper over and trace it or just try to draw something similar I'm going to just go ahead and use the same grid let me um, take this hand and I'll move it to the corner like I did with the other one. Shrink it down. And you can be waving at us over there. Okay. All right, so while that hand is waving at us, um, we are gonna draw it. So things to note from the front side of the hand, the only major difference other than of course all the line structure we have going on there if you guys can see in my little drawing out the the mound of the the palm is actually a little bit higher so if you look at your hand from the back and you open your fingers you can see some webbing in there and that's actually coming and so it's coming up a little bit higher which gives us an illusion of our fingers being a little shorter um, than our palm which is fine we can still use this grid we don't need to change anything. We just have to remember in our heads that when we're drawing our fingers down, that technically they should probably stop somewhere around here. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and start. So same process that you guys are familiar with that we just did. Middle finger is going to start here. Um, and you can be looking at your other drawing too to like kind of justify like how big you want your middle finger to be. I am drawing mine all the way down and then I'm going to erase into it. 
um, just because that helps me to kind of lay things out. So now remember, we flip this. So what we're getting over to the side here is going to be our pointer finger now, and this is going to be our ring finger with our pinky finger coming here. So, um, but we got to break this down first. So I need to look at this, um, find my halfway. It's a little high. There we go. Halfway, and then of course halfway again. And then remember, this is for the height for both pinky and ring finger. And on this side, you're gonna make make them a little rounder. If you guys look at the the fleshy part of your tips of your finger where you can't see the nail because you're on the other side of your hand, it's a little bit more rounded of a structure because you don't have the nail in there, keeping the the surface a little flatter. Um, the flesh is kind of like wrapping around to the other side, so we get a nice round looking shape. Okay, and then I'm gonna draw the other ring finger. And remember, the ring finger sticks to that guide that follows the rules. The index finger is a little bit rebellious and goes off the guide. Okay, same as from when we were drawing the um, backside. Okay, so now we got to draw the pinky. If you guys remember, it's just take this, cut it in half, cut it in half, and then that's going to let me know where my pinky is. Okay. And from this side, the pinky's gonna definitely come down further, just like it did on the, the back side too, though. Right. Okay. Um, from here, let's go ahead and give ourselves that square shape again. If you guys wanna make it a little rounder, because you know what's gonna happen at the bottom, you certainly can. Or just draw lightly, and you can um, add that shape in at the end. And again, we're going to draw in that um, rectangular mound shape. From here, we don't have such an extreme triangle. I'm going to try to make mine a little bit smaller because I saw what happened last time, right, where it got too big. But same joints that we're seeing in the thumb, right? We know there's one right here that's going to wrap over that. And then we know there's another one. The thumb comes above that line. And again, we want that, that wedge shape, OK? where it gets, it's thinner here, it gets wider here, and then it just wraps around, okay? And then it connects to that fleshy part of the skin. And on this part, we can really see that webbing where the skin um, attaches to the thumb. So if you want to, sometimes if you draw some lines in there, it'll make it look a little more realistic or attached, right? Like the thumb is pulling a little bit on the skin there where it's looser. Okay, and you can come in and round that out. And something that also helps too is we have a pad here where our thumb is. So you can go ahead and draw that in too if you like. I'm just gonna keep it loose for now. I don't wanna really make anything definite. Um, okay, coming back to our fingers. Well, we, we gotta find those wrinkles, right? So if you're looking at those wrinkles and you look at your finger, they're about equal distance apart, which is kind of interesting because right, we have that um, measurement with the knuckles on the other side where the knuckles are a little further apart. But on our fingers, um, they're a little, they're more um, evenly distributed because if you remember, we still have to come back in and raise this part of our skin up. I like to just kind of draw a curve that goes down. It's a little thick, but just so you guys can really see it, right? So this is where um, we see that. So I can go ahead and erase this too, so we don't get confused by this. And so now you have this shape. And what you're going to do is just try to break it into um, two even, or I guess like three even boxes, OK? But with only two lines. So you're just going to come in, add one line, and another. And as long as it looks good enough where this, this, and this are about the same size, you should have a nice believable shape. Okay, so remember, you can actually just take that over to the other finger, to your um, pointer finger, or sorry, your ring finger, and add that there. You guys can add a little more wrinkles too. Some people have really pronounced wrinkles here. Depends whose fingers you're looking at. Okay, here we have maybe a little bit higher and a little bit higher. 
and I'm gonna really pronounce the wrinkles on the middle finger. And then, of course, here, I've got their finger as well. Cool. All right, and that gives a little more of a realistic look. I can come in here and erase a little bit of this. We don't really see, you know, this line that's going all the way across, but sometimes if you have like a really fleshy kind of hand shape um, or your hand might be swollen or something, you can really see that skin. Um, and then you also do have like a pad of muscle that kind of sits right here, which helps it so you're not actually just grinding on bone when you're grabbing things, right? And there's another pad that exists right within here, um, but this one's not as pronounced as the uh, the thumb pad, okay? So we don't want to over extend that one. What we can do is maybe erase a little bit of this and have the palm come in just a little bit more. Um, and then on this side, the side with the thumb, this wrist follows the green grid that we created. The wrist over here is a little bit wider. Okay. So let's look at this. Let me take the grid off. In case that's confusing you guys. So there we go. We got the front palm of the hand. Okay. And then we also drew the back side of the hand. I got them mashing together. Okay, there we go. All right, where we played around with the shape of the nails and the knuckles and stuff like that. Okay, so super simple, super quick, guys. We'll go more into detail on this stuff later. I know that the hand does many complicated things when fingers start stretching out or bending over or grabbing things or whatever it is. Um, we can explore those things all later, but having a solid groundwork is kind of the most important part. So give this a try, um, show me what you did. Let me know in the comments what kind of positions you wanna see the hands be drawn in, and we'll go ahead and cover that stuff. All right guys, thanks for watching.